Thursday, we're inching closer and closer to the end of the week and end of the month. Can you believe how time flies? Well, I hope that uh, you woke up well this morning and of course ready to face the day. Welcome to the show. This is your world. My name is Winnie Lubembe and of course today's show is just full of hope and faith because our guest is called Faith. <laughs> and of course, just rising above and against all odds. And of course, my guest today, you'll get to hear her story. She was diagnosed with cancer of the pelvis or pelvic cancer. Uh, and of course, she went through 33 sessions of radiotherapy. And of course, there's a risk, you know, with the same, she was told you might not be able to conceive. But guess what? Months later, she has triplets, not just one, all right, but triplets. It's a story of hope, like I said, and you want to stick around until the end of the show to hear and to listen to her story. So without further ado, Faith, it's so good to have you this morning. Thank Faith Mutsoli. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Busana, and um, you are a journalist, so this yes. is not this is not new to you. I'm really really tempted to, to, to put you on the spot and be like, hey, so can you introduce the show for us? But it's okay. Maybe you'll take us on a break, right? Oh. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Maybe you'll take us on a break. But really, thank you. Um, first of all, for agreeing to come and share your story with us. And like mm -hmm. I said, it's a story of hope and determination and not giving up and not losing hope. And, and that's a really really good thing. Mm -hmm. But let's go all the way back to let's start first of all start with your childhood right how was it growing up and then we'll talk about 2014. all right mm -hmm. first of all let me say thank you yeah. for having me on the show much welcome it's much welcome. such a pleasure yeah. being here this Aww. morning you're welcome yeah all right my name is faith Musweli, mm -hmm. uh born and raised in kakamega county all right um 32 years old mm -hmm. uh a fourth born in yeah. a family of seven of seven all right um I'm a graduate, mm -hmm. uh, degree in journalism and mass communication. Yeah. Although mm -hmm. I'm still jobless. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, growing up, mm -hmm. okay, I'm a wife. Yes. To a lovely husband. Mm -hmm. I know he's watching. Tu wa salamu. Tu wa salamu. Hi, Alex. Because <laughs> he was such a strong pillar, um, you know, while you were going through, you know, your treatment. So, yeah, we really, really, of course, want to say thank you for that support. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a mother of four. Yeah. The firstborn is a girl. Yeah. And then now the triplets. Yeah. Um, growing up, it wasn't so easy for for me All right. because I was orphaned at a very tender age. Mm, I see. So lucky enough, I had a sister who was, she's a woman with a very big heart. heart yeah. Like she took in the five of us. Oh, wow. And okay. kind of got married with us. Okay. So we stayed with our sister mm -hmm. all along until I got married. Yeah. And she made sure that the five of us went to school mm -hmm. up to college level. Yeah. So, uh, it was it was a struggle. Mm. She would you'd, you we, we would like tell her, mm -hmm. uh, don't bring someone wakufieka mm. because we'll chip in. Yeah, we can do. Yeah, yes. we can help like in any way. Yes, we can help we in can. any way. Yeah. Actually, that money we use it to like buyers clothes yeah, okay like don't food. bring someone to a water vendor mm. like let's go mm -hmm. and fetch water yeah like don't buy that mboga yeah let's have like a kashamba at the back of our house where and then can. yeah where we can plant one two three mm -hmm. so she taught us to be responsible mm. from a very young and age as well. and very resourceful That's and yeah. At times, uh, I tend to say that uh, I was so young, mm. but again, I feel like I'm You're so old, faster. so mature. Yeah. Like I'd meet you someone and it's like, faster. ah, you don't talk your age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see that. I yes. see that. Yeah, I can I totally, totally see that. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, you know, we usually look at how we grow up and, 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 and our background, as they usually say, sort of like 
shapes us and you know molds us into the kind of adults that we would be and i'm pretty sure you look back and you say you know what actually that was a good thing exactly and how you know how you were raised and all those things yes. all right um so you grew up with your sister she took care of you became your mother right um mm -hmm. together with your siblings mm -hmm. um let's fast forward to 2014 right you started feeling ill but i'm a little bit curious like going to school and even high school were you always okay were you at some point maybe sickly or what happened you know during the schooling years during my schooling mm -hmm. i was very healthy okay. in fact i was a very great footballer all right really yeah <laughs> Isn't that interesting all right okay so uh, later on realizing that the legs I would run yeah. on and kick that ball yeah. couldn't now even support me to walk. Yeah. Uh, it was bizarre. Yeah. So uh, let me take you back yeah. to just after I finished sure. from four. Yeah. Just after I finished from four, we could go for, for a walk. Mm. And I realized after some time mm -hmm. that I couldn't, when I came back home, I could feel uh, some burning sensation right. in the legs, both that legs time. that time. All right. So which so, year is this? 2008. 2008, all right. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the remedy I could use mm -hmm. was just inserting my legs into cold water. Mm -hmm. And I would feel so much re all relieved. Right. Okay. So uh, I did that for quite some time, all right. like a year. Mm -hmm. And so now that it was giving me the much relief that I needed, mm -hmm. I didn't see, I didn't the think that it would be something. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, I did it for like three, three years. Mm -hmm. And then now after joining campus, mm -hmm. I realized that I couldn't walk for a long distance. All right. Okay. And... Uh, being an orphan that I was, mm -hmm. and my sister having struggled mm -hmm. all through, I couldn't even ask her to, to give me fare to go to school. Oh, yeah. So sometimes I could miss you, school. Yeah. But uh, I thank God that I went through school, finished. Mm -hmm. uh, now come to 2014. All right. Now the pain started being so, so mm -hmm. aggressive. Okay. And I started moving from one hospital to another. To another, yeah. Where uh, exactly? Where exactly did in you Kakamega. feel? In Kakamega. In Kakamega. All right. So the pain. Where were they mostly? In where the did pelvic you feel bone. The, in the pelvic bone. Yes. All right. Okay. So pain here and there. Moved from hospital to hospital. Um, it was going through your story, and you were given all sorts of diagnosis right yes, yes. you were told you have arthritis yes. and then at some point you were told you have malaria yes. at some point you were told uh, you have what typhoid yes well. could you take us through those moments so uh i remember mm -hmm. like there isn't any uh i can say that there wasn't any clinic or lab right. that i didn't walk into in kakamega town right. okay. like i would walk from this one to this Together. one taking tests after one mm. after another mm. so uh i remember taking arthritis tests mm. diabetes mm. uh all sorts of tests that you would have to take all right that okay. i would have that i would have to take mm -hmm. and most of the time mm. i remember being someone telling me mm -hmm. uh you have arthritis okay there is a doctor who told me i have arthritis right. and therefore i started taking some drugs i have okay. i even had to stop eating red meat mm -hmm. okay i was put on a diet mm -hmm. that this is what you have to take for you to be well all right and then now after arthritis mm -hmm. i didn't see any change okay how long did you take the medication for for like one year one year one year wow okay yes. mm -hmm. and then uh having not seen any big change mm -hmm. I went again for another test right. and then um, I did malaria test now this time round. Right. So with malaria tests, mm -hmm. there wasn't any, any positive results coming out of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So I remember one doctor telling me mm -hmm. that sometimes mm -hmm. the test, the malaria parasites fail to show mm -hmm. in some people. Yeah. So just take the malaria and drugs the malarials, yeah. because sometimes the pains are Came, came, they showed mm. like it's malaria because yeah. I would have joint pains, yeah. I would have headaches, I would have all sorts Fever, of pains. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
all right um and it's very easy <laughs> you know and, and most of us sometimes we also self-diagnose it's like yeah let's get pain up a joint and let's get here let's get here it could be it could be malaria so you took all this different yes. drugs yes but no change no change at all yes okay so at what point did you decide you know what i need i need help and at this time mm -hmm. are the pains worsening is the condition worsening do you have any other symptoms aside from you know the pain at your joints and headaches here and there now before we get there mm -hmm. I remember one time mm -hmm. I, I walked into a home medication. So I took the drugs for some time, yeah. but nothing. Nothing changes. Yes. Okay. Now come 2016, right. I was in deep, deep, deep pain. Mm -hmm. And then now I, I, I thought of now seeking medication. All right. Better med medication this mm -hmm. time around. Mm -hmm. So it was just a thought. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have the money. Yeah. So it came to 2017 mm -hmm. when I now walked into, I had now moved to Rongai. Okay. I was hustling in Rongai. Right. So I moved, I walked into a clinic, mm -hmm. an orthopedic clinic. Mm -hmm. And um, the doctor told me, mm -hmm. okay, the doctor examined me. All then right. after the examination, mm -hmm. he told me there is a problem and a very, very big problem. Oh, wow. You okay. need to act with immense speed. All right. So he sent me for an x-ray. Mm -hmm. I did an x-ray mm -hmm. and he was like, this is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need a CT scan. All right. So I went for a CT scan. Mm -hmm. When I brought the results, he mm -hmm. told me, you need to go see a doctor right now. Okay. I'm not in position to help, to help. you. All right. But did they tell you what exactly they were He told me at? I had a tumor on the pelvic bone. Oh, no. Yes. What, 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 is, what was your first thought when he said you have a tumor in your pelvic bone of course i was shocked mm. uh, i didn't believe it in the first place yeah it didn't hit me that much mm. because i knew it was just something that would go away with oh, time okay. all right so i went to nairobi west hospital mm -hmm. we did the scan mm. uh this time round it was an mri mm -hmm. and then they scheduled for surgery okay. i got admitted at mm. nairobi west hospital mm -hmm. Uh, on the very day that I was to be admitted, okay. my sister got a road accident and, and lost the right hand. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. And at this time, it's your sister who's taking care of yes, your now medication. She was, yes. She's paying for your, yes. for your hospital visits and all those things. Yes. And then you're scheduled for surgery. Yes. And then your sister gets into, into an accident. Yes. That must be very tough. It was. Yeah. So I was admitted. Mm. I had to be discharged, mm. go back home, right. and go to a cheaper hospital. All right. So I went to Kenyatta mm. Hospital. Mm -hmm. They scheduled me for another surgery, All right. for a surgery now. Okay. At Kenyatta, I, I remember arriving there at around 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Then they told me, by 8, you'll be in theater. So I waited from eight, mm -hmm. nine, up to six p.m. I was told you'll not have a chance today. Oh no! Okay. So I had to go back home. So at this time, are you still in pain? Yes. What is happening? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Extreme pain. Yeah. But now it was to be a walk-in mm -hmm. surgery because okay. I didn't have the money to stay in hospital. Ah, so it okay. was to be a walk-in. All right. Yes. Go in, get your surgery, go and then go home. back home. Yes. Okay. Um, so at, at this time, do they tell you what, whether the tumor was benign, whether it was malignant? You know, like, do they give you any sort of information or you were just told you have your tumor, you need to get this removed? I mean, you need to get, have the surgery done. And that's it. Okay. The malignancy of mm -hmm. a tumor mm -hmm. is determined when the tumor is excised. Yeah. So I had to do the surgery for mm -hmm. them to know if it's malignant, if it's malignant or benign. Or benign. All yes. Right. Okay. So uh, I thought, let me now go back home again. Okay. So I went to, I paid the money at KNH, mm -hmm. but I had to leave it there. Okay. Because I tried to follow the process, mm -hmm. but I never got refunded. Yeah. So I went to Kakamega now. Oh, you went back home? Yes. All right. So reaching Kakamega, I met one doctor, Al Shula, the mm, late. The late, yeah. May his soul rest in peace. And yeah. uh, I presented to him my papers, mm -hmm. the, all the documents. Mm -hmm. I told him, all I want mm -hmm. is a surgery. Yeah. 
that is what I want. And he was like, no, Faith, you know, I have to put you on some drugs, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I said, no, Doc, I've taken enough. I know. <laughs> I mean, from typhoid to malaria to arthritis to, you know, all this sort of medication that you are put through. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember us disagreeing on that. Mm -hmm. And he even chased me away and told me, okay, so you know what you want? Go back home if you know what you want. Okay. So I went home. Mm -hmm. And that is the same, same orthopedic clinic my sister had been going to. to. Okay. So she told me, Dr. Alshula is a good doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ulienda uko na ujua jimingi ya Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Go back and okay. talk to him. All right. So I went back. Okay. And now this time around when I just walked in, mm -hmm. he was like, I'm scheduling you for a surgery today. Mm -hmm. So I went paid the money. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why I wasn't for medication mm -hmm. was there were little money I had. Mm -hmm was dying slowly I know, slowly yeah. mm -hmm. on buying drugs and all that yeah so i had to get what was supposed to be done recommended okay. earlier on so okay. they did the surgery mm -hmm. after doing the surgery mm -hmm. uh the histology came back mm -hmm. and it read a benign tumor Oof. so i remember asking dr Shula, benign exactly tumor which type yeah. exact type of and he was like go home you're healed just like jesus go home you're healed then i went home okay so I remember going to other hospitals later on, mm -hmm. and they were like, which type of tumor did you have? Mm. I was like, my doctor just told me, go home, you're yeah. healed. So you weren't even more. told what exactly Yes, that at that time. At that time. Yes. Okay. You went home. Um, how did you feel? Did anything change, you know? Now, at that, that time, yeah. after surgery, mm -hmm. the pains were now Subsided, gone. Subsided, yeah. Yes, okay. I, yes. Mm -hmm. I could at least sleep. All right. Uh, I could at, at least do some chores at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. uh, I was better for some time. All right. But then again, mm -hmm. I hear even didn't end. Okay. I started now feeling the pains again. Again. Yes. Okay. So what was going through your mind? Because I'm trying to think you went through, you know, all this took a number of a lot not a number <laughs> took a lot of tests you know it was one misdiagnosis after the other one misdiagnosis after the other mm -hmm. you finally told you know what the surgery was done the doctor tells you just go home you're healed you're okay everything is fine you go home you know you're better for a while and then the pains come what was your first thought when you started feeling the pain again given in mind what you had gone through all those while i'm not going to hospital i can imagine Yes. I can imagine. Yeah. So that was in 2019. 2019. I stayed home All right. for like two years now. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, what else am I seeking? Mm -hmm. If at all I've been through all these, I've seen all orthopedic mm -hmm. doctors mm -hmm. in Nairobi, yeah. in Kakamega. Mm -hmm. So what else, do, what I else need? do I need? Let me stay home and eat healthy. Yeah. So I stayed home for like two years, mm -hmm. eating healthy. Mm -hmm. But didn't just work for me All right now come 2021 mm -hmm. 2019 mm -hmm. i delivered my firstborn all right the pregnancy wasn't easy mm -hmm. because of the pains the pain yes yes mm -hmm. but lucky enough i had my firstborn mm -hmm. and then when she was around six months mm -hmm. i couldn't just sleep through the pain it yeah. was too much okay this time around now i couldn't even walk yeah like it wasn't Completely it wasn't you can't, you yes. can't walk yeah. yes it wasn't just easy and i'm just trying to imagine like throughout the pregnancy and the pain and of course the surgery um you know was done mm -hmm. and now the pain is back and of course you we all understand the pregnancy and the weight and it's just a lot and then the hormones yes. <laughs> you yes. know come into play so i'm just trying to figure your your pregnancy but you're saying it wasn't was that easy yes at all it all right. wasn't easy at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. so i delivered my first one mm -hmm. six months later yes. that is now when i said no mm -hmm. no more to healthy eating let okay. me just go see the go doctors and see what is happening <laughs> yes yeah. so uh, a friend of us referred to referred a friend of us referred us to mm -hmm. dr wabomba right. a doctor at knh mm -hmm. so we went uh met dr wabomba mm -hmm. and he was just a blessing in my life mm -hmm. so after several consultations mm -hmm. he recommended another surgery all right and now this time round it was to be done at avenue hospital mm -hmm. so i asked him because i always had the concern of money mm -hmm. how much is it and yeah. he was like faith you know you're like family so 
it won't be much. Okay. And even if it's much, mm -hmm. don't worry. You're like family. Mm -hmm. He yeah. always reminded me, like, you're, you're like family. Yeah. So he told me it was 70,000. All right. So I said, okay, at least that mm -hmm. uh, we can still afford up All to right. now. At this, at this time. At, at this so, moment. So you're just in pain. Do you know what you're dealing with? Um, you know, no. do you know, you know, what the pains you know is all about or it's just pain same place that you were still feeling the pain now mm -hmm. this time round mm -hmm. i would wake up with a swollen face okay a swollen hand tomorrow right. the following day swollen breast okay like it was changing all the time all right but now mm -hmm. I'm not aware of, of what's what eating exactly me. exactly is eating you. Yes. Okay. How about we take a break on that note? <laughs> <laughs> and then when we come back, of course, we'd want to understand, did you finally get a diagnosis? At what point were you told, um, you know, this is cancer, mm -hmm. um, you know, right? At what stage and all those things? And, um, you know, years later, you have your, your twin babies who are three months right now beautiful beautiful babies i saw them and i'm like wow okay <laughs> these are really, really beautiful Thank babies you. let's take a break and of course we'll come back i'll be able to hear more on faith's story and of course all this is after the short break stay with us That. I brought you a small bonus. Bonus for what? You got us 299 family dinners, 64 kisses on the cheek, 12 road trips to see grandma, 42 jokes from daddy, 49 laughs from mommy. In over 60 years of dealing with numbers, we've learned that the numbers that matter the most to you are the ones that matter the most to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. Unlock limitless potential for your business with Nation Digital Summit, where connections, partnerships, and networking with industry leaders can take your company to new heights. This year, don't miss out on the opportunity to engage, learn, and connect with a global audience as we explore the opportunities around enhancing Africa's digital transformation. Book your slot today for the Nation Digital Summit happening on the 22nd to the 24th of February at the Sarova White Sands in Mombasa County. Your dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to double two three six five or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. back glad to see with us of course the show is your world and of course today it's just about inspiration and encouragement and hope 
and faith <laughs> because we have <laughs> faith Butoli uh, in studio today uh, you know among all four um, but of course with the triplets like I said are only three months old and I was asking us so who is with the babies <laughs> the very young you had to wake up very early to come to the studio to speak with us this morning and again we say really say thank you for that mm -hmm. um, so and of course we were talking about the the fact that you were treated you know surgery went through it was good you were told to go home you are okay you are healed and all those things and then fast forward to 2020 2021 yes. yes when you started feeling the pains yes. um, you know again you don't know what exactly you're dealing with had to go through you know a number of tests so yeah at what point were you told that uh, yep this is cancer of the pelvis now i walk into avenue hospital mm -hmm. And uh, of course, like I said, mm -hmm. always concerned with yeah. what is the bill. Yeah. So I ask the doctors, mm -hmm. how much will it be? Yeah. And they're like 140 okay. for the surgery, 140K. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, gosh, so I what did Dr. Wabomba money. tell me? Yeah, he told that me he'd owe me. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I thought of like, let me just go back home mm -hmm. and then now come back later. Mm -hmm. But I realized that... Uh, my doctor was, he knew that mm. I was so much worried about money. Yeah. And so he pushed me mm -hmm. to do the surgery. Okay. And so we went, did the surgery. Right. The 70,000 was mm -hmm. for doctor's fee. Right. So we paid the 140. And you didn't know. You didn't and know didn't there was a know. separate doctor's there was fee. A, yes, and, and the hospital bill. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right. So before even the surgery, I mean, we were talking about how this was not only difficult for you, mm -hmm. but for your husband as well, right? Got married in 2017. Um, the pain is too much. You can't sleep. Your husband cannot sleep as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Could you just take us through that moment before we come back to, um, you know, understanding what exactly is that you were dealing with this in 2021? So I can say that I'm married to an angel. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Okay. <laughs> because right. yeah. he met me when I was sick. Okay. We met back in campus. Mm -hmm. He never knew me when I was well. Mm -hmm. He has known me being healthy just the other day mm. after I was declared cancer free. Yeah. But all through the times that we have been together, mm -hmm. he has always been massaging my leg, mm. massaging the, 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 the swollen, the mm. swollen breast, the mm. swollen whatever, the mm. swollen any parts of my body yeah. I was swollen. Yeah. Taking care of the baby when mm -hmm. I'm sick. Yeah. He has been like everything yeah. to me yeah. because he had to foot all the bills mm -hmm. together with my family. Yeah. Something that is not just always the That's norm. That's true. That's true. And of course that kind of support again is important because like you said, he's known you seek you know all through until just the other day when you were declared cancer free which we'll talk about yes. okay so the pain continue you go to a hospital you're told this is you know the bill mm -hmm. were you told what exactly is happening at this point because during the first time on your first surgery you didn't know what exactly was happening you were told yes there's a tumor it's benign go home everything is okay right yes. so at this point the pain is just too much you can't do anything um you know you can't walk you can't do any chore because you know it's just just too much um there's swelling all over the place were you told what exactly is happening so we did the surgery all right and went back home the very day mm. so uh after then we took the samples mm -hmm. to three different labs all right the doctor recommended we take it to three different mm -hmm. uh, hospitals right. so that we just be sure what of what exactly is eating is happening. Me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So after two weeks, mm -hmm. the results came mm -hmm. and Nairobi Hospital and uh, Avenue Hospital mm -hmm. were not so sure of what was what eating exactly me. is that? Yeah. And Lancet mm -hmm. read that I had osteosarcoma, right. which is the uh, cancer of the bone. Mm -hmm. So earlier on, the doctor had, had, had recommended mm -hmm. that faith, we just go with the majority. Okay. So if it comes that two, we say mm -hmm. you have cancer, then we go with the majority. Right. And if it's one, so the, the results come in and it's like, no faith, let's go with the worst What's results. The okay. <laughs> All right. So yes. the worst is cancer, cancer of the bone. And of course, in this case, your pelvis. Because I had all the symptoms. Okay. So he was like, why can't we go with mm -hmm. what you are manifesting? Mm -hmm. So we went with cancer. Okay. 
and uh, this time round mm -hmm. it was now to decide which type of treatment to go through to go through. so first of all being told that you have cancer and i'm just looking at you you're very young right yes um, majority of the times where there's like issues with the bone majority of the people will be like yeah that's like old people problems right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you are told you had arthritis and all those things um you know which is usually associated with you know older people which again majority of the times is not true um and then now you're told you have cancer of the bone and force in this sense in your pelvis mm -hmm. what was going through your mind at this point were you relieved that finally you have a diagnosis or were you like okay so what will this mean moving forward i wasn't relieved of course yeah i was like now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the hardest test of my life yeah because looking back mm -hmm. we had now exhausted everything, everything. all the savings mm -hmm. where were we to start from mm -hmm. so they tell me it's cancer mm -hmm. now we are confused of the method of treatment mm -hmm. because now the doctors are saying mm -hmm. chemo doesn't work for bones mm. do you start questioning where did this come from you know i am okay i have been healthy i have been active you know throughout my childhood do you have like those of questions yes so yeah. i start questioning myself mm -hmm. like we've not had an hi a history of cancer, cancer in your family in our family all right so what about this mm -hmm. and what could have happened at time at times i thought maybe mm -hmm. I had a dislocation because mm. I was yeah you're very a active football player footballer. yes, yes. <laughs> so I started thinking maybe I had a dislocation mm. that I, I never realized mm -hmm. earlier on mm. so many questions mm. without answers mm. but mm -hmm. at the end of the day mm. you have to find a solution yeah 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 okay so you're worried you're like so then what is the mode of treatment because now you're told chemo does not work for bones right mm -hmm. um so the only option was what radiotherapy, radiotherapy mm -hmm. or there's no just other that. option yes. just radiotherapy yes okay so with radiotherapy again were you taken then through these are the risks this is what is going to happen this is what radiotherapy is all about did you have like that sort of information yeah. yes yeah. so with the radiotherapy mm -hmm. uh now dr wabomba tells me mm. But you're very young you only have one child mm -hmm. and radiotherapy mm -hmm. will make you barren you not have children yeah. after this mm -hmm. so why can't we think of amputating your leg oh no <laughs> yes oh no so like none was like none of these options was better yes. this one you know might go south and cases of infertility and in fact in. yeah they were like as much as radiotherapy might will work mm -hmm. it also doesn't work a hundred percent okay yes so there's no guarantee no guarantee okay and then the only other option was to amputate, amputate. the legs now that was the best solution okay yes man what, what was it like what was that like for you you're young you're very active you have like a whole life ahead of you and then you're told uh, listen there's either this or that and none of them it's sort of like better you know because they have their own you know risks at the end of the day what was that like for you what was that like for your family what was that like for your husband you know it was confusing mm -hmm. i was like now how would i how will i be carrying my my, my daughter around mm -hmm. with one leg mm -hmm. And how will life be? Because all my life mm -hmm. I've been like who I am today. Yeah, you're active and all those things. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was so, so confusing. Mm -hmm. We had to do so many consultations yeah. that we didn't even, we had to agree, to, di to, to disagree, to agree. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we settled on radiotherapy oh, radiotherapy yeah. all right so started radiotherapy um you said you went for 33 sessions. sessions of radiotherapy what was that like um for you during you know the spirit did you have to go how many times maybe in a week or how many times in a month for your sessions and um, yeah what was that like did you experience any um you know side effects because we know some of these reactions that might happen when you're going through treatment 
nausea mm -hmm. was so much right. during that time. Mm -hmm. I was so much nauseated. Mm -hmm. And then immediately after the session, mm -hmm. I would have a running stomach. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so I would stay around for like an hour, yeah. finish my business first yeah. before I go back home. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I went, I would go to hospital like Monday to Friday. All right. Every single day. Every single day. Wow. Okay. Yes. All right. You have a young baby um, at home, mm -hmm. right? But you have to go to the hospital every single day. Yes. Just to make sure that you attend, you know, your, your treatment. Mm -hmm. Did that put a strain, you know? Because I'm trying to imagine. And of course, you have to pay for every single session that you go, you go through. Your main concern initially was finances. Yes. At some point, you said, you know, your husband exhausted all his savings right mm -hmm. so what was that like so after exhaustion of age and every saving we had mm. we now had to form whatsapp groups okay so many people came through mm -hmm. and uh, the treatment was so costly mm -hmm. but i thank god so many people came through mm -hmm. we got the money that was required yeah. and finally mm -hmm. i started the treatment yeah that is three sessions. A lot of people don't usually, you know, understand because again, it's just it's a lot of things to think about, um, you know. And and this is as far as cancer treatment. There's the option of chemo chemotherapy, which was not an option for you. There's radiotherapy, there's surgery, you know, and all those things. So for someone who's like, okay, radiotherapy. So what was that like for you? Could you just tell us your experience? What was the process like? What is radiotherapy? You know, and and all those things. Okay, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. How to explain it? like now 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 let me take you back okay. the concern was mm -hmm. i wouldn't give birth thereafter yes so i was like then did you make what are some of part? the sorry? yeah did you make peace with that yes i okay. did i said mm -hmm. all i want mm -hmm. okay actually i remember getting uh, the very first time i got onto the treatment bed right. the, okay. my doctors were like have you been told you never give birth again mm -hmm. and i was like yes yeah and then he went on, you know, we don't want you to start running around with papers, mm -hmm. taking us to court. Okay. Yet we, you are told all this. All then right. I was like, all I want is life. And you want to get better. I want to get better. Because all I have the a child to take things. care of. Yeah. So if God has blessed me with one, mm -hmm. then why can't he give me life to mm -hmm. take care of her? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So uh, I started the treatment. Mm -hmm. So the doctors told me that as much as mm -hmm. the, the rays would damage the ovaries, mm -hmm. they had to shield. Mm -hmm. So okay. they had a shield right. that at least mm -hmm. uh, could help. All right. So you so asked of the process. On, on your left knee, on your right? On the uh, left. Not knee, but <laughs> on your left side or on your right? On your left. Yes. Okay. All right. So radiotherapy process, mm -hmm. you lie on the bed mm -hmm. and then... Of course, there was some shielding, mm. so they shield the part, right. and then they treat only mm -hmm. the affected the part affected of the body, part, which is on the left side. Which is on the left okay. side. And I'm telling you, mm. that part was like roasted meat. Yeah. I would look in the mirror, mm. and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. is this me? Mm. <laughs> yeah, because that is one of the reactions from radiotherapy. It's like you, you might experience a bit of like sort of like quote burning. Unquote, burning. Yes. Yeah, of the same. All yes. Right. Yeah. So the skin burned mm. and turned black, extremely black. Mm. But with time, it's been fading until now. It's mm. still fading off. Mm. But what matters is what I got out of what it. What I got out of it, yeah. Yeah, it's like what well, it's it's uh, I mean, the all the pain and 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 this is in terms of going through the treatment every single day. Every single yeah. day. And majority of the times when we talk about the treatment, there's also that aspect of commuting, which can be costly. Every single day you have to go to the hospital <sighs> and then come back. You know, go through the thirty three. Yes. How long did this take you? A month plus yes. going through treatment. Yes. Okay. A all month right. plus. Mm -hmm. And every evening I had to pay a taxi. Mm. To and fro. Yeah, to go home. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine. I'm, I'm, I can imagine. I can imagine all that. All right. So you experienced burning, mm -hmm. um, you know, your skin that is, um, you know, from radiotherapy. Any other reaction that you got? Nausea mm -hmm. and the diarrhea. And the diarrhea. Yes. Okay. So pull through, though. 
<laughs> 33 sessions in, yes. right? Yes. Finished, uh, you know, all the sessions that you were. So at this point, are you experiencing like change in terms of how you're feeling, um, you know, the pain and all those things? Are you experiencing change, uh, change by the time you get to your the last session? So as I go through the treatment, mm -hmm. I realize at least I can sleep. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep yeah. for like three good years. I'll go to bed and my yes. sisters are asleep mm -hmm. and I'm just pressing, scrolling mm -hmm. my phone mm -hmm. through the night. When I got married, mm -hmm. my husband is asleep. I'm scrolling through the phone. Mm -hmm. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. I cried until mm -hmm. I said no. You can't cry anymore. No so more there cry. No more tears. Yeah. If I can't sleep, I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. So if I cry, I wasn't the situation. You know, you're really, really <laughs> strong. I'm just listening to you and, and I'm just like, I... I <laughs> wow you know yeah it's like got to that point of acceptance i can't sleep i can't cry anymore there's nothing else that i can do your husband is really trying to support you mm -hmm. you know massage you when you feel the pain stay with you up when you are in pain and all those things mm -hmm. that you go to a point you're like you know what maybe this is this is my life yes. you know yes and then now you're going through a treatment and uh you can finally sleep how did that, that, that must have felt I really felt so nice. Right? <laughs> right? Like you can eventually felt, sleep. Yes. Yeah. If you can sleep. Yeah. Just sleep. So think something's going to take for God, granted. Because yeah. there are some people out there. Who can't sleep. Who can't sleep. Who can't sleep at all. Yes. Yeah. So I can now sleep. Mm -hmm. I can now carry my baby mm -hmm. and walk around with her. Right. Something I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. I can now stand mm -hmm. for like an hour. Mm -hmm. I can now wash utensils. I can now wash clothes mm -hmm. and have no, like when, whenever I could do uh, hard chores or yeah. just even simple, yeah. I could, my, my body would swell. Ooh, okay. Yes. All right. So this time round, I'm not seeing the swelling. Yeah. Like I'm becoming normal now. Okay. It's so like I, you're getting your life yes, back. Yes. Something that you did not have for a very long time. Time, exactly right so finished all your sessions mm -hmm. um so then at what point were you told you are in remission you are okay so this is in 20 2020 2021 2021 now 2022 yeah now i finished the sessions right. and one morning my husband asks me mm. oh faith you're sleeping <laughs> <laughs> was nice for him too right yes, because yeah. when i'm sleeping he's he can sleep too. as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Ati, ata squeezy siku massage. All right. Then I was like, I thank God. Mm -hmm. So, I finished the treatment. Mm -hmm. Six months later, mm -hmm. the doctor recommends a PET scan. Okay. So I went for Just another. Just to see. Yeah. Another PET scan. All right. The PET scan shows mm -hmm. the cancer is gone. Okay. Yes. That must have felt. Ah. Right. So much relief. Yeah. Yes. Like to be told you're, you're cancer free. Yes. That, that must be the best news. Um, Ever. Say, something that <laughs> changed, changed your life. Yes. So when was this? At what month? 2022? April. April. Not April. Because April is when you conceive. Yes. Right? Yes. It's like you missed your period and okay. So in January. Yes. Right? Yes. Three months later, April. Right? you miss your period yes okay i miss my period and something yeah. i forgot to mention yeah the effect of radiotherapy was mm -hmm. uh fluctu it fluctuated my periods yeah. so when i missed the period in mm. april yeah. i was like it's normal yeah. one of those days yes it's, it's okay yes it's okay. okay all right so two months on mm. i start feeling nauseated all right tired mm -hmm. then i told my husband Come first April, mm -hmm. if I wouldn't have seen my, my periods, mm -hmm. then I go buy a test kit. Okay. So I go buy a test kit. Come first April, I miss the period. Mm -hmm. So I went, bought a, a test kit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when I just tested it, mm -hmm. did the test, mm -hmm. it was so rapid. Okay. Then I was like, okay, why is it so rapid this time round? Yeah. Because I like before, yeah, it's usually you have to sit there and wait. <laughs> yes, I need to wait. It was like, <laughs> okay, yes. what do you see? What do you then, see in the test? A positive, a positive, one. yes, okay. Then I told my husband, okay, you went in shock because again, 
you were told that yes. chances are he might not be yes. able to conceive again. Yes. Ever. Yes. And then you do this test and it's very rapid and all of a sudden it reads positive. Yes, because I remember Dr. Maina, my gyna, telling yeah. me, Faith, you know you have to harvest your eggs. Yeah. And I told him, I don't have the money. I know. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's very expensive to I harvest. I don't have the money. Store. Yes. So I do the test, mm -hmm. turns positive, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'll have to redo it. Okay. Because I didn't just believe yeah. how. Yeah. So I retested. Okay. Turned positive again. Again. Yes. Okay. What is going through your mind at this point? I am really happy. I'm just about to cry like in the <laughs> next few minutes. You know, because I can imagine that that after you were told, listen, you you can never bear children mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And then the first test, it's positive. The second test, it's how positive. many did you do? Three. Three. Yes. All of them positive. positive. Yes. How was that? <laughs> how was that? I was elected, of course. Right? And uh, I said a prayer because yeah. along the treatment mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. I learned how to pray. Mm -hmm. And everyone I would talk to would teach me how to pray. Yeah. Tell me, Faith, this is how you pray. Mm -hmm. When you pray, say this. Mm -hmm. Tell God this. Mm -hmm. So I became so spiritual, All right. so close to God. Mm -hmm. So I said a prayer and thanked God. Mm -hmm. Third month, mm -hmm. I started the prenatal clinic. All right. I went to the same, same guy now All right. who told me, Faith, you know you have to harvest your eggs. Yeah. And told him, Doc, I'm pregnant. Yeah. He was taken aback. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, what did you mm -hmm. do? Yeah. Even thought I took fertility drugs. Yeah. But I just conceived naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you continue with your, 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 your um, prenatal, right? Go on is normal. At what point did you were you told that you'd not only have one, not two, but three <laughs> babies in you? Now, the fourth month, yeah, I walk into the clinic, mm -hmm. and uh, I go for an ultrasound. Okay, and then the doctor tells me, Faith, do you like surprises? Then I was like, Yes. Yeah. And then he tells me, mm -hmm. she tells me, it was a mm -hmm. she. She tells mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. now let's count. No, no, no. What are we counting? What are we counting? Yeah. Then she was like, okay, let's go. One, two, and three. Okay. And then I was like, okay, three, and then go. Mm -hmm. Then she was like, no, those are the number of babies you're carrying. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. When did you, yeah, how did you react to that? Like, I texted my husband yeah. and told him, mm -hmm. hey, I'm carrying triplets. And then he was like, <laughs> Unapenda jokes sana. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Unapenda jokes sana. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay. Yeah. I, I was joking. Mm -hmm. Just told him that. Mm -hmm. Then I called my sister, of course, who's okay. been my mother all yeah. through. Yeah. I told her, I'm carrying triplets. Yeah. She didn't believe. Yeah. She was also like, what did you do? Right? Did you take fertility drugs? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. No. Yes. Yeah. So I get back home, mm -hmm. and my husband is not still believing mm -hmm. that... You I have triplets. Yes. Yeah. And then now, I remove this long ultra, the scan, <laughs> a long one. <laughs> <laughs> then now I tell him, uh -huh. now this is your one baby. Okay. Yeah? The last time you had a baby, okay. Yeah. How long was the scan? Now mm -hmm. this is your one baby. Yeah. Then he was like, okay, one, two, and three. Did it take you some time to just think about the fact that you are carrying three, not just one and not two, but mm -hmm. you're carrying three babies? Like, did it take you some time to process yes. all that? Yes. Because I'm trying to imagine you lying there and you're told, hi, let's count. Yes. <laughs> you start counting one, two, three. And then, you know, I yes. can imagine. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how, how that must have felt. Um, first of all, for you, given what you were told mm -hmm. and the risk associated with the treatment. And now you're carrying three babies and you conceived naturally, did not take any fertility, um, mm -hmm. you know, medications or treatment and all those things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then <laughs> were you thinking about, okay, raising, raising just one child is not easy for anyone and, and this is like in all senses right mm -hmm. and now you have to raise three now did you start to. like thinking about that immediately after processing all this information yes mm -hmm. okay when i was told i have triplets i was like okay how will i raise the three yeah 
it being that it's only my husband who has a job yeah. and not me. Mm -hmm. And I was so tiny that time. Yeah. I mean, I saw your pregnancy photo. <laughs> we, we have we have them. I think we'll, we'll just pull, um, you know, one of the photos. You were just tiny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a tiny girl. Yeah. So I was like three on this body of mine yeah. with a weak pelvis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. Will I really be able to carry the three babies? Yeah. Because despite the fact that uh, I... I am cancer free. Mm -hmm. The leg, the left yeah. leg has always remained numb. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, will the pelvis even support the yeah. pregnancy? Mm -hmm. But who is God? I never had yeah. any complication whatsoever. No, no. It was no, an no. easy pregnancy? Yes. The first one you said was, was a bit rough. Yes. And, and again, you are going, you, you know, you are not okay at that time, you know, um, with the swellings and all those things. Yes. So the whole, you know, pregnancy was smooth. No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, were you sort of like cautious in terms of like what you were doing, how you were walking, just to make sure that everything remains okay no. until you have your babies? No. You just went about your business normally. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that yes. interesting? All right. So when did you deliver your babies? October. Because they came, they came earlier, right? Yes. At around that, is 30, 30 weeks. 30 weeks? Yes. Okay. So you had to go through CS. Yes. Okay. So you have your babies, right? How, you know, like their weight, how were they, you know, when, when they were born? So I remember first mm -hmm. walking into the clinic, right. the hospital, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I had pains through the night. Mm -hmm. So I wake up very early in the morning, mm -hmm. I go to hospital yeah. and then they, they go for an, I go for an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. They do an ultrasound and they tell me mm -hmm. uh, the cervix is closed. Okay. So you might go home. Mm -hmm. Then I was so happy because mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I didn't want to leave my baby at home mm -hmm. and stay in hospital for so long because yeah. I was like, if the babies come so early, I'll stay in hospital for so long. Yeah. So when they told me you're going back home, mm -hmm. I was so happy and I said, it's okay. Yeah. But now, an hour later, mm -hmm. they're like, you're not going home. Okay. Why? Do they tell you why? We are admitting you. Okay. Reason, as much as the cervix is not open, mm -hmm. your pregnancy is a high risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we can't let they're you go multiples. home. Multiples, yeah. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can't let you go home. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, get in trouble. Yeah. And then the, have to come all the way back to the hospital. Yes. Okay. So I get ad admitted. Mm -hmm. Around 11 mm -hmm. in the night, yeah. my husband goes back home. Mm -hmm. So I remain in the hospital. Mm -hmm. At around 12, I stand up from the bed, mm -hmm. going to the washrooms. All right. And I feel some coldness on my legs. Ah, your water broke. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the water breaks. Yeah. I go in from the doctors and they're like, okay, and you wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. you see. Yeah. So the water breaks. Mm -hmm. I'm rushed to theater. Yeah. The surgery is done. Mm -hmm. The babies are born mm -hmm. at 1.5, 1.4, 1.3. All right. So I have to stay in the hospital for 35 days. Okay. So I stayed around for 35 days. Yeah. And I must say I'm so grateful to yeah. Memorial Defense Forces Hospital right. for having taken care of the babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, just, I'm, I'm trying to figure your initial thoughts just looking at, at your babies, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, majority of the times what we see with multiples is either they're born, um, you know, prematurely, they're, most of them are a bit underweight. Mm -hmm. um, yours was not, I mean, one point, you said 1 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 1 and, and 1.3. Just looking at them. What, what, what is going through your mind at this, at this time, just looking at your babies just lying there? I was just so happy. Yeah. Because... I didn't, first of all, I didn't believe mm -hmm. that it was happening. Yeah. So when I first held my babies, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is God. Yeah. <laughs> this is God working miracles yeah. in my yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. All right. And 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 your babies are okay. Three months later, and your babies are just they're beautiful, beautiful children. And and again, like like I said, we have we have some of their photos and all those things. They are beautiful. Going through all this and now seeing your babies and not just one, not just two, but <laughs> three. <laughs> It's, it's just it's, it's a story of hope and really, um, you know, and encouragement. So just in case someone is watching us this morning and thinking, man, that was that, that was <coughs> a kind of an ordeal, right? Um, but here you are today. You're very strong. You mm -hmm. were strong throughout your treatment. And here you are today sharing your story of hope and all those things. Mm -hmm. What is it that you will tell people who are watching us this morning? Acceptance. Okay. When you first accept your situation, mm -hmm. Everything becomes, uh, everything flows easily. Yeah. When you're sleeping in that bed, mm -hmm. don't tell yourself that I mm -hmm. can't do it. Yeah. Ignore the noise yeah. in your head yeah. that I, I'm not making it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're making it. You're making it. When and look you believe. at you. And look at you. You're here today. Thank <laughs> you so much, Faith. Really, we can, would want to sit here and listen to your story over and over mm -hmm. again. But we unfortunately have to end the conversation here. Thank you so much okay, for coming by something. today. Yeah. Very quickly, like 10 seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank each and every person mm -hmm. that came through during the treatment. Mm -hmm. My sister, my husband, mm -hmm. my high school classmates in Butere Girls. Yeah. Each and everyone who supported Ma you. Yes, who I supported like me. I like that. And yeah. thank you <laughs> for coming today and sharing your <laughs> story you as well. Really, really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. all the very best in raising your babies. Thank you. All the very best. We can't wait to see them grow up to be healthy, amazing, uh, you know, babies mm -hmm. and adults as well. But mm -hmm. thank you really for coming by today. Faith mm -hmm. Mutsoli, who is a journalist and, you know, her story is this of hope and encouragement. And I hope that you have been encouraged this morning. So we have to end the conversation here and quickly head um you know for the digital summit that is happening in mombasa so yeah we're just gonna cross over there but have yourselves a lovely day ahead i'll see you next week on monday stay safe